ba, ba, ba. I know this my chance true about a ticket to the world and then I come back again I don't know about that I forgot that damn goose thing anyways your man Rico the your pianist this finished with my last client and uh so I can I can run something by y'all real quick uh, it's your man Rico the opinionist y'all go ahead and uh like share and subscribe just getting my stroll on there's some thoughts that came through my head you know this right here and uh like share and subscribe uh what else check out the, the description box I'm all over the place Instagram Twitter Facebook group TikTok yeah so anyway the title of this this quick thought is says dear some black women please explain this be these behaviors to me you know social media just has everything right and so I just uh I just want to share some things about a couple of subjects well about oh well, I, I should say a couple of behaviors and I and some of our sisters because you know they don't like to be generalized was when it's not be positive they don't like to be generalized but if you say black women are beautiful they'll never say you don't generalize so i, I get that <laughs> so uh anyway there's this video i saw on instagram shout out to uh, tommy sotomayor tommy sotomayor and there's a uh, or tj the architect on instagram he had this video up of this young woman, college student at this, apparently is a historically white university or white college. And she was, I guess she was somewhere on campus and she stops and, and, uh, and I guess there was, they were all gathered in this space that was supposed to be designated for, I guess, African American, I'm sorry, people of color. Cause black women don't like to say that. Well, black Americans don't like to say black people anymore. They, we've gotten caught up in this foolishness called people of color. And if you knew your history, knew who you were, you know that black is infinite. It is what other what colors derive from. But we allow these folks to call us people of color. God dog. I know we refer to as colored, but that was to be derogatory. So anyway, now y'all think y'all saying something small about saying people of color. And we know damn well the people of color are the, you know. Mainly the mass shooters, you can see the Mexicans and people from India and the Asians. And those are the people of color, as y'all love to say, not black folks. Uh, so anyway, uh, she decided to get everybody's attention in the little room and, and give this speech about, you know, this is our space and this space for people of color. And there's too many white people in our space, and this space is designated to us. Now, she's making this speech, and I'm assuming Caucasians are in the room. Caucasian students are in the room. And I, it's, I was like, well, wait a minute now. You're at the school, big, you're at a school with mostly white folks. And you're going to tell them, you know, this is our space on campus. I guess they do that. Who is this? Anthony... What's up, my man? I guess they do that at these white schools, but wait a minute. If but to the sister and all the sisters who think like her, if you wanted you no know, exclusive black space, how come you didn't go to an HBCU? I don't understand. You want to be around them. You want to receive the education around them. You want to you know be all up in their face, but then you're gonna tell them when they can't be on their campus. I just find it to be kind of, you know, alarming mentally. I think that's mentally alarming, something cuckoo about that. You know, you want to be with her. And I'm not some kind of separatist or anything. I'm just trying to make sense of what she was trying to say. You know, I know. And because uh, as, one, as one who pays tuition, I'm like, shit, I have access to anywhere on my campus. But yeah, but you don't hear no black dude saying stupid shit like this. Just be these entitled sisters. And also... You're talking about, well, we're in our space and too many white people here. I mean, just made the speech. 
And uh, <laughs> while wearing a white woman's hair, of course she had a weave. That's not a shocker. So I understand how you have such, have so many, some sisters have such this attitude or dis, dislike for Caucasians when you do work every day to try to look like them. You spend your money, billions of dollars every year to wear their hair. You know, and some of them in, in the uh, African diaspora or the Caribbean, they're bleaching their skin trying to look white. So I just, I just need y'all in the title, as I said in the title of this, could y'all please explain this behavior to me? I don't understand. I don't quite get it. Uh, number two, I can go more into that, but I think y'all get the gist. How you gonna be at a white school telling white folks where they can't be on their campus? Now, uh, maybe, maybe I need to, I should have dug a little deeper and see if that's a, a part on campus like the, I guess the, like a black student union. But still, should I walk up in there? If I were a Caucasian student, I'd walk up in there too, just to look around. This is our space. There's too many of you in here. It just sounded weird. <sighs> to you black folks that want to be in black spaces, that we got 100. I think right at 100 universities and colleges that you can attend all the black spaces you want. But I know you think that ice is colder. That's why you went to their schools. I know. But then you don't want them to be around. It's just like somebody coming into my living room while I'm watching TV and asks me, could you not be in here while I'm in here? <laughs> it's just something. Anyway, I digress. Well, let me go to my next topic really quickly. Um, there's this article, if it hadn't hit you yet. And I don't know, I, I try to read and read and see where the dentist's office is located, but it's, but it's an African-American sister, black female, is went to a dentist, a dental school, and she opened up her dentist's office in, I guess, you know, in a black neighborhood. And um, she put a sign out that says, outside of her, her dentist's office, no bonnets, no house shoes, no pajama bottoms. And that has sent shockwaves through social media. And you know who's pissed off about that? Uh, the sisterhood. They are so offended that a woman, a, a black woman, opened her dentist office and I guess what apparently is the black neighborhood and she decided to have standards or expectations of behavior or a dress code. What is it about a dress code that black folks seem to have such a problem with? And even in black establishments, it's not white establishments only because uh, y'all heard that controversy in the turkey leg hut in Houston they told these folks look no bonnets, no see through dresses no blow up dresses, no house shoes no this and sisters went berserk people got upset but man it wasn't black men because black men are logical, we're not petty and emotional and so it went so it got so bad that the people had to come out and do a public statement and explain, damn, this is our business. It's a very, it's a good looking husband and wife couple who owns the turkey leg hut in Houston. They had to put that out. And then here in Dallas, downtown Dallas, he had this whole family of black folks, beta male, Negro, a husband and son with emotional black chicks were not allowed in this restaurant downtown because of dress code. They want to cry racism. And this, they don't let us in. And so what they tried to do was go outside and say, you can't, you can't have tank tops, you can't have this. So they said he can have on a tank top. So he gave a tank top to his mom and the mama wore his t-shirt, whatever. They tried to pull an okie doke and they're like, no, you can't come in here. We know why you don't want us in here because we black. I've never heard nobody try to make somebody take their money, but black females will do it. Wait a minute, was, hold on a minute. Let me go back a little further. A few years ago here in Dallas, a Negro male well, with locks or with dreads was walking with his Asian and white friends. They went in, they tried to go into this little club or this restaurant. And, uh, <clears throat> The, the person at the door told him he couldn't come in. But I think they let his Asian and his white friends in there. I don't know if they went in there. All I know is they told him that he had on tennis shoes and they were not allowed. 
it was something that happened like a, um, a restaurant off of 75 in Dallas. And um, he was, his feelings were hurt so badly that he took it to the Dallas City Council to try to get that business punished. And I looked at, I saw that story, I said, what a stupid Negro. This is what the civil rights movement has produced. A bunch of blacks who are gonna try to make white folks take their money. Well, that's what they did with the civil rights movement. They ain't gonna make people who didn't want them, who didn't want their money, to try to force them to take their money. So this is, the, this is the generation that the civil rights movement has produced. It's weird. Hold on a second, y'all, let me get across here. Y'all know I'm in the public. And so, next, <clears throat> Let's bring it back to here. Now, I don't know why standards or expectations are so allergic or, or, or so many black women are so allergic to standards and what people want for their business. Look, I wish Walmart to come down on a dress code. And it's not just black women or black people, it's people in general. But when people come to Walmart, they think they're supposed to just Roll out the bed and come up in there. And bonnets are everywhere. And no, because everybody dressed crazy in Walmart. I wish Walmart had clamped down on that, but I guess it's too big of an establishment. We'll take their money, go ahead, and we'll just go out on the Riviera on our yacht from these folks' money. Fine. But these smaller businesses have the right to have standards. Damn. And, it's, and I guess it's like, especially when it comes to women. And then, let me get more specific, African-American women. It's like, you are not supposed to have an expectation or a standard when it comes to them. Even when it comes to dating. You better not say you don't want to date a woman with children, and you black. You better not say that you don't want to date a fat chick or a thick chick. You're going to catch the blues. So what is the problem that black women have with st standards? Hold on a second. What is the problem that black women have with standards? It's the weirdest fucking behavior. Y'all gonna have to help me with this. Y'all gonna have to explain this to me. Cause it doesn't make any sense that we behave like this. I don't know if we're entitled, I don't know if it's arrogance, or we just coddled Americans. What is wrong with black folks? And sisters, y'all gonna have to explain this damn behavior to me. Cause uh, don't nobody have to let you in their place looking raggedy. And so I, as I read the article, I, I put the article, I put both articles, both links in this so y'all can read what I'm talking about. They want to bring up, always talking about somebody discriminating against black women's hair. Ain't nobody discriminating against black women's hair. Natural hair, that is. No one discriminates against black women's hair more than black women. Ask, you, if you don't believe me, ask Gabby Douglas, the young sister about 15 years old doing double and triple flips on a damn beam and high flips and shit in the air trying to win Olympics gold medals. And they around there telling her, her edge is sticking out. And this girl is flipping all over the goddamn Japan. Where were they at that time? Were they, were they in Japan? This young girl is flipping all over the place. They shamed her so tough that she ended up wearing a hair hat and a weave. Psychologically destroying it. Black men didn't do that. Black females did that. She's not representing us uh, on the world stage. That's what you said because I read it. Then most recently, <laughs> y'all attacked a young woman who got a husband, who got married, got a husband to a black man. Y'all attacked her on her wedding day. Saying her edges one tight. Her natural hair. And she might have had a little piece of something. I don't think... Um, Simone Biles' hair is that long, but it looked, you know, it looked very nice. Her ponytail looked, looked very nice on her wedding day. And sisters attacked her, but they always want to claim somebody white is being racist against their hair. Then they came up with this little dumbass act called the Crown Act. Stupid. I'm like, how are you going to have the Crown Act and y'all don't even like your own natural hair? You still spend $50 billion annually on, on Indian and Asian hair. <laughs> and, and now you're spending... Millions, millions of dollars on BBLs, but somebody discriminating against you because your looks—you got to be kidding me! And so the dentist—I don't know where it's located. If anybody can tell me where it is, because I tried to read an article. The dentist office. Now, what this sister can do, she can say, "Well, f y'all, let me take my dentist office out of this so-called hood and move it to a nice suburb and a nice strip mall and give me some different caliber clients." I, you know, and I won't take Medicaid and all the other shit. 
or what <laughs> I won't take all that. How about that? Or force you to come way out on the other side of town to where she is if you want those uh if you want her services. It doesn't make any sense. This has gone viral because a woman, because a small establishment told people I don't know. Come in. Let's have some some kind of dignity. Why why is the suggestion of appropriate behavior so offensive to a particular to such a large segment of black society? Why is it? Hell, I can go back to when I went when I used to go to galas and affairs. You know, like all white affair, all black affair. You know, Negroes wouldn't do right. All white, and the guy would say, well, "Shout out to Curtis Givens, by the way, in Memphis." All white affair, all black affair, as his, his friends call him, Lou Wook. Shout out to that brother. I used to enjoy the hell out of those all white affairs and all black affairs. You know why? Because, and, uh, because I used to obey the rules. I used to come in, I used to have on my white belt, white, white shirt, white shoes, white t-shirt, white socks, white, everything was white. Because I understood when it says all white affair, it means everything is white. Now you can have a different belt, but... How are you going to have on a, a weird color belt unless you have on a tan or very light brown belt? But, uh, but yeah, there are people who try to buck those rules. The people come to the door, white pants and turquoise shirt, uh, checkerboard, black and white blouse with a white skirt. or I mean, anything, just, just to be recalcitrant, just to be different. What, it's kind of, what kind of childish hard-headedness is that? It's the weirdest damn behavior. It was men and women, but mostly sisters. And then we say, I'm sorry, baby, um... These are the rules. That's okay. I can keep this little thing. Give me my money back. I don't want to come here no more. I mean, just get downright belligerent. <laughs> I know he said we, mental health is a real deal, but but we can be talking about But I need to see more of y'all in my damn office. Or need to go back home and get some home training. Because this is ridiculous. And so, y'all done attack this lady and accuse her of, of what y'all call this shit? Um respectability yeah that's that's the respectability politics like whenever somebody black uh demands that black folks behave or look look nice and look clean you get accused of respectability politics isn't that something the weirdest damn thing and and, uh, and people people ought to be ashamed of it you know, use the, use the right words when it's time to use them. Don't try respectability party. She's a this and she's a that. Called her, oh, I referred to the dentist as ugly names that she didn't deserve. All because she said she don't want you to come up in her dentist's office wearing pajamas, house shoes, and bonnets. And when the hell did bonnets become part of somebody's hair? This discriminate against black women's hair. That's not hair. That's a damn covering. Because if you loved your hair so much, you wouldn't be wearing no damn bunnies everywhere. Then, I, of course, you know, I read the comments. We know. Well, it's always something different with black people. They expect us to be, uh, to always be dressed up where we at. That's not true. This actually, we just expect you to look like you've been raised by somebody. Yeah, I want to know something about my mother. My mother wouldn't even go to the mailbox unless she was presentable. Did y'all know this? This is old school. My mother wouldn't even go to the mailbox <laughs> if she wasn't presentable, let alone go to Walgreens or Walmart. Because for me, I don't even, look, I don't even come outside. I guess I get it from her. I get that from my mother, my brother, my sisters. We all, we don't play that. We don't play being raggedy in public. Because people say, well, shit, ain't nothing but Walmart. Where's your self-respect? Where's your dignity? And that's how I was raised. We don't play that. And I don't understand how we became so morally laxed and, uh, and lackadaisical when it comes to our presentation or what's important. You know, people do see you wherever you go. If I go to the corner store, somebody sees me. If I go to the airport, somebody sees me. If I go to Walmart or Walgreens or Kroger, somebody sees me. All that to me is the public. And so I was always reared to understand that you have to make sure that you represent yourself a certain way. People uh, receive you how you present yourself. You can't get mad at people for having a, a different kind of perception of you. And especially if you, if you come out here with pajamas on, wherever you are. 
Hell, they do it in high school. The principals even let these little raggedy ass students, middle school, high school, wear pajamas at school. There are some schools, and I've seen online. They let them wear, in, when it's cold outside, they let them wear blankets around their bodies to school. What kind of third world country behavior is that? They don't even do that in third world countries. So I apologize to the third world countries for that statement. I'm not even going to put that on y'all. Because third world countries got more dignity and class than these so-called first world uh, free ass uh, capitalistic Americans. They act like we lost our damn minds. So when we gonna have these real conversations about personal behavior, personal responsibility? Every time someone suggests behavior, appropriate behavior, we go nuts, literally, on social media and in public. And yes, I do roll my eyes when I see people in pajamas. Cause you know what that tells me? When you come to Walmart any time of the day in pajamas, lets me know that, that you have not taken a bath. And that lady probably said, hey, she, she probably, that lady, the dentist, she's probably tired of her, her lobby smelling like Budisi and push-ups and dirty hair and funky breath. She's probably tired of that. So he's like, wait a minute, maybe if I tell them not to wear pajamas and house shoes and funky feet and muster arms and wear pajama bottoms, she should have said pajama tops too because you have to be very specific when you're talking to ignorant folks. Well, she said pajama bottoms. She ain't say pajama tops. You have to say pajamas, period. When you're talking to these damn people. Anyway, they ain't want to throw in the Crown Act and all that shit. No, no. Y'all talking to a real one. I don't play these games. And sisters, y'all get y'all sisters together. I, as y'all notice, I said some. But hell, it's a whole lot to get upset. Now, like, you can't say nothing to them. Why is accountability such a, it garners such an allergic reaction for so many people in our community. This shit is stupid. But yet, these same pajama wearing folks, these same bunny wearing retarded mother lovers, won't refer to themselves as queens. It's, it's the weirdest thing. I always thought queens had kings. I thought queens had a kingdom when they owned some land. I don't understand all this queen shit either. I ain't, I ain't, y'all, ain't, y'all know I've never called a black woman a queen. Never in my life. Because I... I because... I was in the fifth grade. I was in the seventh grade. I was in the ninth grade. We had history. And I read about what a king and a queen is. I ain't called dudes kings. I said, that's bullshit. Because I'm about behavior and I understand what things, what words mean. And <laughs> people probably say, well, I call them kings and queens, you know, so we can boost each other. We come from kings and queens. Well, how we know that? Have we done a DNA test? Because some of us probably came from peasants. Based on this current behavior, some of you came from peasants. Shit. Oh, well, probably a few of us. We, I guess we can say we came from kings and queens in Africa. That might be true for some of us, but a lot of the ones who wear pajamas in the public, band, uh, sagging ass pants in the public. Um, what else? What's it? Bonnets and all that shit. Y'all ain't come from the queens, sweetheart. And this little tattooed up the neck, brother, ain't come up to, from no damn kings. Because we got to look at behavior. Does the behavior match the name or the adjective? If it doesn't do that, somebody lying. So anyway, I put the story in here. Y'all can read it. You know, they, they're really upset about it. But we're going to have to change our behavior in this country. It just, it's just, as y'all get it together. Stop trying to bully people for telling it. Trying to give you some sound advice. Hell. Anyway, I digress. It's your man Rico. Rico the opinionist. Whew. The sun has come out. It's gleaming on you, boy. Whew. Gonna mess with you. No chocolate milk's in the heat. <laughs> so, y'all, like, share, and subscribe. Hey, look. Check out the description box. I have my short story in it. It's only 50 pages. Those who bought it and read it, it's, it's pretty cool. So I think you'll enjoy it as well. It's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt. A conversation with absent biological father. Please, who never, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know who that is. Somebody trying to hate on my pimping. And, uh, and it, damn, I, I wish she was attractive. There'll never be no attractive chick to be like kind of cat call your boy. So what was I saying? 
yeah, the greatest pain you ever felt. Uh, it's only ten dollars. Dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. Uh, if you hit your boy up, look. Please send me an email address so I can send it right back to you or send it directly to you. It's in a PDF format. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to enjoy the rest of mine. And I'll probably come back with another live because stuff is always going on. Y'all be cool. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.